Hello, my name is Doofy Doo, and this is a Doofy Doo talk through of one of my favorite games of all time. Not just a great console roguelike, although it is generally considered the best console roguelike. Not even just a great roguelike, a great game, period. I speak, of course, of Mystery Dungeon 2 Sheeran the Wanderer, developed by Chunsoft way back in 1995 for the Super Famicom. It was finally released in the West in remake form on the DS in 2008. I'll be playing the remake that takes what was already a legendary game and really polishes it to perfection. You might be familiar with some of the other Mystery Dungeon games, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon being the most popular. Uh, this game is really in another league. I mean, those are good games. Chunsoft has made some good games. They made the first five Dragon Quest games. Dragon Quest IV, one of my favorite RPGs of all time. This is the pinnacle of their output. It's a perfect mix of the original Rogue on the PC and classic JRPGs of the 90s. Just as a side note, this isn't going to be one of those Let's Plays where I read everything on the screen. If that upsets you, I don't know what to say. I think it's might be time to learn how to read. This could be your year you can do it. But not a big deal. Not a whole lot of story to share in the Wanderer. Big mysterious mountain. Shaped like a penis, although it does have a groove in the middle, like a vagina. What's it supposed to be? Some kind of vaginus? Let's climb to the top and find out. I'm pretty sure that's the story. As I said before, my name is Doofy Doo, and I will be your host through the awesome wonderland that is Sheeran the Wanderer. If you've played a lot of roguelikes, you'll feel right at home with this game. If you have not played a true roguelike, it's going to be a crazy ride. Then let's get started with a cutscene about the legendary Golden Chicken. The Golden Chicken of legend amassed great fortune atop a strangely shaped rock. If I may draw your attention to the face of the golden chicken, clearly she is being orally pleasured beneath the cloud somewhere. This is what it looks like when a golden chicken climaxes. The chorus to a prince song, if I'm not mistaken. And here we have our silent protagonist. Hat from Big Trouble in Little China, Duffel Sack from Street Fighter 2. But wait, what's this, something new? That's right, there's a weasel in my pants. Look up ahead, Pants Weasel. Let's stand on this road that looks like a strip of bacon and stare majestically outward in a vaguely Ninja Gaiden-esque cutscene. I think that's supposed to be the call of a hawk, maybe? Uh, no, Pants Weasel, I don't see a mountain. I do see a giant statue in the shape of a vaginus. The one thing that's not quite as good in this remake is the sound, because the Super Famicom and Super Nintendo had really legendary sound uh, when it came to orchestral and ambient music. Techno music usually sounded a little better on the Genesis. But here we're meeting your pants weasel, Copa, who does all of the talking. And he has a little bit of an attitude because he's from the 90s. It was pretty much law in the 90s that your games had to have some kind of sarcastic talking animal. Started with Sonic, of course, but there was also Bubsy the Bobcat. That guy wouldn't shut up. Arrow the Acrobat, Crash Bandicoot. Later that night, bow chicka wow wow, chicka wow wow. No means no, Pants Weasel. Tossing and turning on this prickly bed of hay. Shimmering. Virginus Mountain Plus. Wavering golden chicken of legend equals brown and yellow liquid gooey what even I don't even know what's happening the pain Ah, oh, it's just the sunlight look at the attention to detail in that animation pants weasel stretching rubbing the sleep out of your eyes what is it pants weasel little Timmy fall in the creek check out that lens flare on the top screen that's some swanky retro 16-bit lens flare, I like it. I slept well too, Pants Weasel. Sure didn't have any bizarre dreams about hermaphroditic mountains combining with golden chickens. 
I'm wavering like some LSD trip. Nope, no dreams like that. That would be crazy. And bam! We're already into the game. That's what I love about old games. You don't waste your time with like 20 minutes of plot. This is the tutorial level that's new for the remake. In general, the difficulty in the remake is broader. So it starts out pretty easy in this level that it's almost impossible to die in. Although I have, because I was being a huge dumbass. And by the end, this game is much, much harder than the original. In particular, the best part of the game. Oh, look, he's asleep. That's another new addition. They added some sleeping animations to the enemies. In the original, they just kind of stood there frozen. It was kind of weird. But now they're asleep until you walk past them. Yeah, the best part of this game, Phase Final Puzzle, is an order of magnitude more difficult and satisfying, in my opinion, in this game because they removed the cheap trick that everyone used to use to get through Phase Final Puzzle in the original. The enemy design in Shirin, in particular, is really top-notch. Uh, if you look back to that first enemy I was fighting, the mammal, which is the slime equivalent, here's a couple of them. What, what exactly is that thing? It's like they took the head of a beaver, they, they chopped off the body and then sewed the tail of a beaver back on the back of a head. Like a bouncing, disembodied beaver head. I mean, how does that thing even masturbate? It's a mystery, another mystery for Sheeran the Wanderer. I'll go ahead and equip my wooden shield. Those sleeping animations are adorable. And now I will punch it to death. Beginning of the game, I'm already fisting bouncing beavers. This game is so hardcore. I don't even know what to say. Probably noticed I'm exploring the entire floor to soak up all this delicious loot and experience. That's important to do. This second enemy always reminded me of uh, that chicken hawk guy from Foghorn Leghorn cartoons. I'm a chicken hawk. I hated that guy. Boy, I say boy. I always wanted Foghorn to like boot him across the chicken house. If you notice, here, let me see if I can find another one. There he is. He's got a little red mask and a cape like he's cosplaying Raphael from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I want to be Raphael. You always get to be Raphael. Oh, and here we come to our first palette swap, the pit mammal. A pit mammal is what happens when you take a regular mammal and you toss it in that prison from Dark Knight Rises. Leave it in there for a few years. When it destroy its own kind. You don't know the hell that beaver's been through. <laughs> no, sometimes the enemies will kill another enemy or kill another person. And they level up. So a mammal would level up to a pit mammal. Not a big difference in that case. Just a different colored bouncing beaver head. In other cases though, it makes a huge difference. An enemy can suddenly be completely out of your league after leveling up one time. Here I'm coming back to the most simple trap, a wood arrow trap just does a little bit of damage. Later traps get way more nasty. In fact, a single trap can potentially destroy hours and hours of painstaking gameplay. And like any true roguelike, if you die, you're back to level one, lose all your items, first town. It's kind of like dying without any continues in a game like Super Mario Brothers. If that level of difficulty does not appeal to you, then you're probably not man enough or woman enough to enjoy the awesomeness that is Sheeran the Wanderer. But as long as you learn something when you die, and most of the time you will, uh, you will progress. Here we see another thing borrowed from Rogue. If I, uh, oh no, now I'll never go to Kamikan. If I use a health item when I'm already at full health, my maximum health rises just a little bit. If you're coming to Shirin never having played any roguelikes, it doesn't make a great first impression. Looks kind of like a... <laughs> that is the best stomach growling sound of any game, by the way. Looks kind of like a clunky, jerky uh, Link to the Past clone. But this is a game that gets better and better the more you play. And that's not just Stockholm Syndrome talking. At least, not totally. Now we come to the first town, talk to this man, checking out my hat. You staring at my pants, weasel boy. Canyon Hamlet's the town you return to every time you die, so you'll get pretty used to it. Just like in real life, we'll head immediately to the bar. 
check out this foxy lady. Everyone always walks in place in all games. Talk to this old jaw man. What's going on, old jaw? <laughs> Inserting, removing many items at once. Now I know why you're alone. No thank you, sir. No thank you. I sure am. Mm-hmm. And dirty young man, too. <laughs> Have I told you there's a weasel in my pants? Hey, who you calling, ho? It's important every run to come and talk with the bartender because he gives you a free big rice ball. Just to make sure you don't starve to death. We are well equipped and ready to begin our ascent to Mount Virginus next time. If you look, the two choices for saving are quit and give up. This game does not like you and it's not a shame to say so. Even the save screen has a picture of Sheeran getting beaten by the shopkeeper and sheriff. Chicken on the mountaintop, burning like a golden flame. My weasel says we've got to climb up. Vaginus was its name. Let's climb it, Pants Weasel. Let's climb it. You stand in my Pants Weasel, boy.